Hello and welcome to another video. It's been a while because I've been sick. I still am, but I did a cool thing. So I figured I would click the record button and walk you through what I figured out and how I got there. Uh, anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so in order to set the stage, um, Century has this sort of overly complicated release system called Craft. Uh, the idea behind it is it understands all of the different package managers and does releases for them, or at least in theory. Uh, unfortunately, this means everything's in a giant Docker image, and so anytime we try and upgrade things, it seems to break one or more of those languages. And in this case, it broke a whole bunch. We tried to upgrade to Node 20. Uh, it's currently running Node 14 or 16, something really old and out of date and not supported anymore. Um, but it mysteriously broke unzipping. Uh, and this actually broke the first time we tried this, but no one wrote down what happened, and so we tried it again to try and understand why. Um, and so it failed again. Um, yeah. <laughs> Did we figure out what failed last time? No. <laughs> anyway, it failed again. Uh, it's not this person's fault, but... Uh, and it failed in a very sp spooky, mysterious way. Uh, it failed in trying to unzip this particular zip here. Now, the way this works, and it's a little convoluted, uh, artifacts are uploaded to GitHub, and then GitHub zips them. And so if you have a zip, it will be a zip inside of a zip. And initially, that's what I thought the problem was. So I tried making a zip inside of a zip, and everything worked great. It seemed to only be this specific zip. And I still don't exactly understand why it's this specific zip, um, but it seemed to be this specific zip. And so I tried to grab the zip and try and look at the insides of it. Um, this is a, a little bit fast forwarded ahead, but inner.zip is this same zip right here. This Sentry Android Gradle plugin 4.3. And I tried to look at this zip, and one thing that struck me as odd, or at least after I <laughs> spent an hour scrolling through Wikipedia articles and learning the entire history of zip, the current version of zip is like 6-ish, uh, and zip 1.0 was released in like 1993, so very, very old. Um, but the first thing that struck me as odd about this zip was it is method deflate, which was not introduced until zip 2.0, uh, but claims that 1.0 can extract it. That that felt a little bit weird to me, uh, but it's not actually the problem here. Uh, I learned about this thing called zip info, which tells you about the items inside the zip. Pretty pretty useful. Didn't actually help me find the bug here, uh, but you can see that this zip is actually a bunch of jars, and if you know what jars are, they're also zips, so it zips all the way down. Um, and everything inside of the zip seemed pretty normal. They're deflated, which means they're um, compressed, essentially, Zlib compressed, uh, I think, yeah. Um, and so I sought out to try and reproduce a zip that looks exactly like this. Uh, there's also this other uh, Perl utility called zip details, and this helped me a lot in trying to make a smaller version of this zip. Uh, it basically tells you all of the various entries in a zip and all of their headers and how they're, they're hooked up. Uh, to note, uh, 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 interestingly to note, zips are actually comp uh, comprised of the headers in the bottom up. So at the bottom of the file, it tells you uh, where the headers are. That's what this bit is here. Um, then there's these central headers. That's what uh, these numbered headers are. They basically tell where the file metadata and stuff is. Uh, this number five, for instance, is talking about this particular file, and it's um, uh, the file, yeah, the file information offset is at this offset here. If we go up to there, payload five, yeah, this one. Uh, as you can see, this is that same offset. Anyway, really useful for debugging a zip, but it turns out that the zip format was not the problem here. Uh, I managed to take the zip and create a 1.0 deflate zip that didn't have these giant jars in it because uh, I wanted I wanted a small zip that I could upload as a test case that wasn't 55 megabytes, which I also can't upload to a GitHub comment. So it was really hard for me to like report this as a bug in the first place. Anyway, it turned out to not be the zip format. I still don't know why it fails, but that's not important to this story. So next what I tried to do is reproduce this problem and figure out what exactly was happening. Uh, so I took this zip that I knew uh, if I put it, or if I downloaded it from GitHub in another zip, then it would cause a problem. Uh, and so I initially started with the GitHub zip itself. Uh, that's what this 36CE is. If we do unzip-l zips 36CE. 
this is essentially what GitHub was handing us. And this is our artifact uh, upload from, from GitHub with that funky zip in the middle of it. That's very, very big. Uh, none of these other zips caused the problem, so yeah, something something about this zip, probably something about the size of this zip uh, was causing it to unzip incorrectly. Uh, take a drink every time I say zip. Yeah, this is gonna be, I'm gonna say the word zip a lot in this video. Anyway, um, so I took the original GitHub zip and yes, it reproduces the problem. If I try and unzip this twice using the unzipper library, which is deprecated or whatever, uh, so this t.mjs does, it takes arg2 and the output as arg3. And if I run node t.mjs on zips 36ce uh, to 36ce out one, uh, it succeeds in uh, doing the first level of unzip where we get these zips here. And if we do the second level of unzip, it has corrupted the first file in there. Uh, 36, oh no. 36CE out one plug and build blah 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 4.3 to out two and we get an error. So basically what's happened is the first level of unzipping has corrupted this file here and this was probably my breakthrough moment. This is where I was like great I can reproduce this problem at all. Uh, let's try and narrow it down to make it smaller and eventually I will have a small enough reproduction that I can report a bug somewhere. Um, but I failed at making it smaller than this, but I did get something reproducible, which was helpful. Uh, I found that if I took that zip, which is now named inner.zip, and just put it inside of another zip and tried to unzip it, it would cause the problem. Uh, so fortunately for that, I was able to take the downloaded zip and put it into another zip, and then I could reproduce the problem. So I wrote this little shell script, which pulls that down, uh, you runs this little tiny bit of JavaScript here and validates that we can round trip this inner.zip through outer.zip and get the right shot to 56 sum. And if we run this little reproduction script, um, we will see after it does some stuff that we've somehow corrupted that file. The shot to 56 sum no longer matches after round tripping through a zip. Great, we have reproduction. And uh, we know that this is broken on node 20 which was the version that we tried to roll out. Uh, so then I tried to reproduce this in any older versions of Node. Uh, and so I stepped back one major version at a time just to try and get an idea of like ballpark when this broke. Because uh, I was initially thinking about, okay, well, I know it works in Node 14 and I know it's broken in Node 20, but that's like several years of commits and it's gonna take me a while to figure out which one caused the, the regression here. Uh, so I eventually stepped through major versions and got back to version 17 and took that same reproduction as before, the same exact thing. And on version 17, it successfully zips and double unzips it. So everything's all good here. So I know uh, from this that there's some bug between node 17 and node 18. Uh, now I've done, well, node 18 point whatever the latest version of node that I had, 18.19. I knew that it was somehow broken between this version and 17 point whatever. Um, so I knew that that was where it broke, uh, but I didn't know where it broke. Uh, I actually did a video about Bisect before. I'll try and remember to link that in the description. I basically used Bisect to try and figure this out. Now, uh, what I did with this is first made sure that I could still reproduce this outside of Docker <laughs> using my stock node that I had here. And uh, in fact, if I run this reproduction script, uh, it does still reproduce with node 1819, which happened to be the version that I had installed. Uh, and so next, what I did was I cloned node, um, which is just on GitHub and you can build it from source. And it, it's actually really easy to build from source. I was expecting a really complicated build setup, but it's it's literally just, you need Python, GCC, uh, G++, and make. That's it, pretty easy. Uh, even Python's more complicated to build than Node. Um, mostly because Node pulls in all of its dependencies and tries to make the build a lot easier to do than anything else. Uh, now the build does take about 50 minutes on my machine, which is not great. Uh, so then I set out to bisecting. And the idea with bisecting, if you want to TLDR the other video, is you know a good commit and you know a bad commit. And you try the commit in the middle, you see if it's good or bad. If it's, let's say, uh, good in this case, you 
know that this is now your new good commit and your new bad commit, and you basically shrink it down by cutting out half of the commits at a time. So I tried to take that script that I had before and simplify it down so that I could run it faster while also compiling node from source. And so that's what this uh, repro bisect.sh is. Essentially, run the build of node. Pretty easy to do, actually. Oh, I don't even need this. This is a leftover for when I was installing node. Um, this exit 125 is for uh, for bisect if you want to ignore a commit. So for instance, if, if node didn't compile it a commit, I don't know if that's good or bad. So you can exit 125 to skip it. Um, yeah, basically build node and then run the same reproduction script that I had before, this uh, repro.sh. Um, I adjusted this slightly with some exit ones and to not re-download the, uh, um, re the zip over and over. Uh, and so, yeah. And specifically exiting one so we don't accidentally exit some exit code that we don't want. But basically I was able to just take the original reproduction script and boil it down to this. Run it through git bisect, which took a while. Let me scroll up to when I actually ran those commands. I'm not gonna rerun it again because it took hours. <laughs> But it's nice because I just set it up and you know, walked away and did other work. Um, but basically, get bisect start to initialize the bisect process. You label which commits are bad and good. I knew 18, 19 bad. I knew 17, well, I guess I could have marked 17, 9, 1 as good. Um, but I knew this was bad. I knew this was good. Uh, and then... Oh, I made sure I was caching the <laughs> compiler output. The docs recommend this as a way to speed up the build. It didn't really make much of a difference for me, but uh, that's probably because with bisecting, you're changing lots and lots of C files or C++ files. Uh, and so C cache uh, doesn't help you that much when they all change every commit or every time you build. Um, but yeah, then after that, it's just git bisect run. You give it the script to run and it bounces back and forth through revisions to try and find the problematic commit. Uh, and it went through 2,000 commits in uh, about four hours, uh, which is not bad. Um, basically, you can see some of them fail, some of them succeed, and it basically stepped its way through the commits. Eventually, it landed on this commit here, always delay construct callback by a next tick. Uh, and so I was able to take this commit and look at this on GitHub, node.js node commit. This one, and if you look at the commit, it doesn't really look related to what we're talking about, um, but sure enough, I checked out that commit and validated that, or checked out the commit before it. Now, where was it? Oh yeah, checked out the commit, showed that it's failing, uh, checked out the commit before it, which is gone in my history for some reason, and it succeeded. And so yeah, this was definitely the problem. Uh, once I sort of understood what was going on, uh, I <laughs> had figured out what caused the problem. I actually stepped back into the original issue tracker and tried to see if anyone else had run into this. I probably should have done this first because it would have saved me a whole bunch of debugging, but then we wouldn't have gotten a cool video out of it. Uh, ended up finding this issue, which was essentially the same problem, getting a corrupted unzip with extract. I don't think there's involved a zip inside of a zip. It just happened to be corrupted for whatever reason. I think it has to do with the size of the file. The larger the file, the more likely it's getting corrupt. But um, yeah, anyway, they had the same problem. Uh, someone else did essentially the same thing that I did. They figured out uh, which versions of Node caused the problem and then found the exact same commit that I did by bisecting, presumably they bisected, I don't know if they actually bisected, but uh, seems like they uh, maybe bisected, but didn't say they did. Um, and someone else reported this bug in Node uh, actually just last week, which is wild. <laughs> this has been broken for like a, a year plus, and just last week somebody reported this bug and um, it got fixed like three days ago. <laughs> and sure enough, when I checked out the latest version of Node here and tried my reproduction, it's working, so it got fixed. Uh, but that is to say, yeah, all of, all of this was um, a roundabout chase to find a very strange bug in a system that I don't completely understand. But I learned a bunch of cool things, like Node.js is really easy to build. I learned a lot about how zips are structured. Um, 
actually because because you're here or you're probably not you've clicked off the video whatever anyway um i tried to recreate the zip uh but smaller by stealing the headers and blobs uh the, the central headers and the local file headers of the zip and recreating my own zip that was smaller uh, i think creating a smaller zip actually makes the bug go away but this is how i was able to re uh, recreate a new zip from a larger zip with the same headers um, and if we look at uh just fix it uh i don't have it in this one uh, where is it? Ah, there it is. Yeah, so uh, I was able to create a zip that is smaller and has the same V1 uh, deflate, which I, I thought was weird. Um, and this is you know a completely valid zip that I created by stitching the headers together manually. Uh, anyway, hopefully you found this interesting. It's a little bit rambly at the end, but that's just the way things go. Uh, if you have additional comments or questions, leave them below, uh, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.